Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, and thanks for tuning in today. Today I'll be working on the 2005 Honda Odyssey on the lift behind me, which is a fixing it forward project. Now a while back I ordered a bunch of parts, but not all of them have shown up yet. There's been some weather and some stuff recently that I think may have contributed to that. But I need to move forward if we're going to get this van finished in the hands of somebody that needs it. So I'm going to install some of the parts that I have today, check out a few other things, and well, bring you along for the ride. Let's get started. So here are the parts that I've gotten for the van so far. And FYI, the van itself and all of these parts, save this engine mount over here, were all purchased with money that was donated to Fixing It Forward by you, the audience that donated to Fixing It Forward. Now I'm not ac accepting new donations to Fixing It Forward at this time. I'll link a video in the description that further explains that. But for now, we're gonna take what we have, put this van together and get it back on the road. I think we're gonna start with some brakes. Oops, <laughs> not quite starting on the brakes yet. Now that the van is all the way up in the air, I wanna check out one thing first. Uh, I've purchased a set of four new tires for this van. And along with that, I wanna get an alignment and we're underneath the rear of the van here. Now, in order to perform an alignment on the rear back here, you need to be able to move. These are called cam bolts and they're sort of on an offset, and as you rotate them, it moves this control arm in and out a little bit. Uh, you might remember from the video that I did with my 2012 Honda Odyssey that these bolts can get seized up inside of this bushing. When that happens, this adjustment really isn't possible without damaging or hurting this bushing. So I need to make sure that these things can move freely now before I move much further. So I'm gonna soak them down with some penetrating oil and then we'll uh, have a look to see if we can move them to make the adjustment. If not, I'll probably look into purchasing some of these lower control arms, uh, new bolts, and I would also consider the coil springs. And the reason I say that is because on my 2012, I actually had a camber issue that I got some adjustable control arms to correct. But the reason that camber issue was there was because over time, these springs will sag and cause the suspension to lean in a little bit. Given that I'd be replacing these lower control arms anyway, it might not be a bad idea to also replace the coil springs at the same time. But first, let's get a look, uh, get some penetrating oil on these and see if we can get them to move. I'm gonna let that sit while I work on the brakes. Oh man, again. Yeah, these are pretty much done. Most of this corrosion and everything you see here is because it sat for so long. So we'll just renew everything. The slide pins are a little rusty. <laughs> we can fix that though. Ugh. This is how they end up. I'm just going to take it over the wire wheel, grind off all of this rust, and we'll cut it with some fresh silicone lubricant, put it back in, should be fine. The bottom one comes out easy, I think. The boot is a little troublesome, but same thing. I'll just, I actually won't wire wheel this one. I'll just clean it up and reinsert it. One is rubber, has a rubber end on it, and that's a lower one. The top one does not. Make sure you don't mix them up. It's all shiny and nice now. Just making sure that it moves freely. It is important that it does. Let's see if we can get a look at that parking brake. This rubber plug doesn't come with the new rotor. We need to transfer it over. Oh yeah, we're good. Little adjustment on the new brakes, good as new. Let's start with a good cleaning. Clean my new rotor. Now for specifics on brake jobs like this, I'll post links in the description to I've done many videos on this kind of thing. I 
new pads came with new hardware, which is awesome because this is, well, well, a whole better. It's a thing of beauty. Happy to see that the pistons compress. That means that the caliper should still be working. Why didn't I do this the other side? I forgot. <laughs> it's the same on this side. The top one's the one that's frozen. Do what you can to try to not mess up the boot. Wire wheel time. Also looks good, perfect. With the rear brakes done, now let's see if those uh, bolts on those lower control arms move. That's just the outer nut, not the bolt. <laughs> that one's solid. <laughs> Rusted, literally solid into place. Same thing. I mean, Oh, hang on. I had hopes, but it looks like the bushing's moving too. Gotta get some control arms, some bolts, and some coil springs for good measure. Moving on to the front. Dead spiders, number one cause of brake failure. Just kidding, by the way. Passenger side's done. Don't I just figure that the last screw I got to remove doesn't come out? That's okay. I have methods. Ah, you did not defeat me. That kind of fixed it. I might reuse it. Let's put it in there loosely.
Now that the four wheel brake job is almost done, I wanna do one more thing, and that is replace the brake fluid. It's been in there a while, and it's just good to replace it every once in a while anyway. Uh, so I'm gonna switch out all the brake fluid, and then we'll call the brakes done. The master cylinder is located right here. I'm also gonna be doing some engine work, which I'll cover in a different video. But it kind of makes sense to me to remove the battery in this air box since those are going to be coming off anyway, giving me easier access to the master cylinder. So here I go. Now this part should be really interesting. <laughs> How often these actually come apart. Well, that's not cool. The boot is cracking. I'll show you in a second. <sighs> grateful for that. Let's just see where that boot cracked. I have to find another one of these. This isn't a mass airflow car, so it doesn't have a mass airflow sensor, but still, I want to address things like this. I'm pleasantly surprised to find a brand new air filter, and that would also explain why the fasteners, well, I was going to say the fasteners came loose, but I spoke too soon. This one broke right here, but we have all kinds of room to get to the master cylinder now. I'll start by cleaning it. Ew, yucky. This is just a filter assembly. All better now. Not wanting to run the old brake fluid through the system, I'm gonna use my super special turkey baster. Try to get as much of this out of here as I can. This one has like a needle attachment on it that allows me to get way down in there. But I haven't had a turkey baster yet to hold up the brake fluid over a long period of time. Now I'll top it off with some fresh stuff. Loosely put the cap on so that nothing gets in there. I'm gonna use the same receptacle you saw me use when I compressed the calipers to put this on each one of the wheels, pump the brakes up on all four wheels till it comes out clean. I'll spend a little more time on the rear, uh, but the idea is that this comes out clear when I'm done. Now I'm just gonna slowly pump the brake pedal. I'm actually trying to avoid taking it all the way to the floor because I have known master cylinders to get damaged. Main takeaway here being, don't let it run dry. Always keep checking the master cylinder, make sure it's topped off. I'm put the screen back in. Top it off, and we'll call the brakes done. And because there's new friction material, both front and rear, I can fill it all the way up to the top. Brake fluid gets low for one of two reasons. The brake pads wear, and the extra fluid goes to take up the space uh, because the piston is extended further out, uh, and, or there's a leak. But try not to overfill it, because some people, when they do brake jobs, uh, compress calipers and just run the brake fluid back up into the master cylinder. If you've topped it off before that, brake fluid could go running out everywhere. So I only top it off after I've done a four wheel brake job, like completely top it off to the max line, which is what I'm doing here. It's way better than it did when I started. Basically took two bottles of brake fluid to get here. Now those brakes should last the new owner a good long time. With the brakes done, and well, not many other parts at my disposal, I do have the parts to replace the inner CV boot on the right side, which is leaking. So let's do that now. Here's the culprit here. You can sort of see all the residue that's left from it slinging out grease for a little bit. These are 36 millimeter for these axle nuts.
cars that sit, right? The danger of smacking this with a hammer repeatedly is you mushroom the end out and booger up these threads. A way to prevent this is to take the axle nut. Many axles, new or reman or whatever, come with new axle nuts. In fact, I keep some of them in stock. Uh, but anyway, take the axle nut, put it on like this, and hit this with a hammer. Although, I think an air hammer can be effective. In fact, that's what this little hole is for in the end of the axle. It fits this air hammer right in there. I had this pry bar for more than 20 years and it just dropped and landed just right and that's what we got. I think I can glue it back together, but still, sad day. Can I not hit my hand today? Some might say, Eric, why not replace it with a whole new axle? Well, the axles that are out there are remanufactured, not necessarily new. This is actually an original equipment axle. I can tell by this uh, sticker here. If it only needs this inner boot, this outer boot seems fine. I don't see the point. And I'd rather recondition an original equipment axle that was already in the van than get an aftermarket one and roll the dice. Not saying that there aren't good aftermarket ones out there, but I know for sure that this one will work. At least I hope it does. And problems that you see with inner CV joints, actually feel, would be vibrations, highway speeds. Ooh, where's my rags? I'll need lots of rags. Rags. In case you're wondering, that's the part number for a new CV boot kit, inner CV boot kit for this Odyssey. Comes with the boot clamps and grease which this one broke open so we'll have to get a little bit creative This one even came with a new axle nut. A little bit of silicone spray helps it slide down better. I'm gonna try and put this, well, I'm gonna put this back on exactly how it came off. We got new snap rings for everything. I'll use it. I'm gonna take this guy over to the parts washer, get it all cleaned out. The other gloves disintegrate if I do this. As long as I'm in a cleaning mood, might as well clean up this subframe. Something I noticed, I took a quick look at the clamps. These are a new style clamp that I haven't seen from Honda before, but that said, um, it requires that they go on before the boot, at least, well, the inner one does. So if you're doing this, make sure you do that first. Since it already is open, I'm going to use that opening. Just gonna fill the sky with the rest of it. And I just do the whole bag. You want it to move in and out. You want to try to avoid an air pocket, which is going to force the grease out. So I put it in like a neutral position. I hope you heard that. I'm 
And that's it as far as CV boot replacement goes. I think it takes more effort to get it out of the vehicle. But this way I have my original equipment axle, the one that was in the van to start with, which I like if there was no issue with it. Let's put it back in. They gave me a brand new axle nut from Honda. I will use it. I would advise doing the axle work before the brakes, which I didn't do this particular time. It's job done. Now, as I mentioned, I don't quite have all the parts that I need for the under hood, the under hood work that I'm looking to do. Uh, but what I thought I'd do now is I've reconnected the battery. I'm gonna start the engine, I'm gonna run it for a bit. I've always had, well, a question of whether or not that third catalytic converter that's down underneath that was filled with all that junk that you might have seen in an earlier episode. Uh, I've since cleaned all that stuff out, but now I wanna verify that converter's operation. And I'm gonna do that by starting the engine, letting it run for a while, sort of revving it up a little bit, and then checking the catalytic converter's temperature. If it's 100 degrees hotter at the outlet than it is at the inlet, then I can reasonably assume that it's working. But if it's not, well, probably time for a replacement. Let's find out. Forgot, it's dry by wire. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got in the front. About 268, 290, and at the back. I think we're going to need this one too. In fact, the higher temperature at the front might can, might actually indicate that there is a restriction based on what I'm seeing here. Oh wait. Let's check the pipe. All right, we got two, somewhere be, let's call that 210. Yeah, and in the front we've got 270, 260. So now, I think, I think that guy's gotta go. I did have hope, but not too much hope. So we'll have to get that catalytic converter also. Let me think about what else I might be able to do here. I opened up the doors to air things out a bit. It was a little exhausting in here after running the uh, car like that. But anyway, uh, I do know of something else that I can do. I have headlight restoration kits galore. And given that these require some attention, I'm going to do that now. I've covered this in other videos so many times, so I'm just going to maybe give you a time lapse or something on that. Or maybe just a big reveal. <laughs> that might be the direction I go. Uh, but for starters, I'm going to remove this front bumper, see what kind of stuff is lurking underneath because it's held on by screws on both sides. Maybe we can repair that as well and get rid of those screws and make it look a little bit better. There's supposed to be an attachment here that the bumper skin is going to go into. There's nothing here. In fact, you can get a better look at it over here. You can sort of see what should be there uh, that is not. And then it's supposed to clip in up on these parts, which this isn't even attached very well. In addition to that, if we come over to the bumper skin, we can see that there's, supposed, there's a piece missing on this side and there's a piece missing on this side. Given this situation, in order to properly fix this, uh, I believe it would require new of these attachment points up here, but also considering the kind of shape that the front bumper skin is in and the fact that it's broken, probably need that as well. Unless I can find one in salvage, I don't really see myself going in that direction. I'll probably just use the screws again because, uh, well, there will be a lot here to fix. I'm not as worried about that as I am about making sure that everything mechanically is working properly. So that's my focus. Not so much on cosmetics. Uh, there's still plenty to do mechanically, but 
at least now we know what we're dealing with. Now I'm going to recondition these headlights and maybe we can do a dramatic reveal or something like that. And here is the reveal. It will be much easier to see at night with this van. This had to be done anyway. No better time like the present. All right, viewers, I'm going to call it here. Uh, we got plenty of stuff done today. There's still a lot more to do, so there will be videos covering that in the future. Just got to wait for some of those parts to show up. Uh, I hope the information in this video was useful to you. I'll put links in the description to additional videos and additional information uh, if you had questions about specific things like uh, more information on how to install CV boost, stuff like that. Uh, I'll also put links in the description of parts and things that I used. So check the description if you're looking for additional information. Also in the description will be a link to airatthecarguy.com, which is where I ask you to go if you have on amount of questions. And a big thanks to all of you that donated to Fixing It Forward that are helping to make this happen. We're going to put this in the hands of somebody that needs it once I'm done fixing everything up and get them on down the road. Uh, I am not accepting new donations for Fixing It Forward at this time. There's a link to a video in the description that describes more information about that. But we'll be back with more repair videos on this Odyssey, and I hope this information was useful to you. Thank you so much for watching today. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>